Throughout history, cannibalism has always been present. There have been many tribes who will consume their dead as a ritual to immortalize their loved ones. But there are also killers who consume their victims, such as Jeffrey Dahmer, making the ritual much darker than its origins. Today we will be investigating the case of Tyree the Cannibal, who is currently serving up to 60 years in a mental institution, or until his doctors decide he is better. And before we jump into our case, please join me for some liver, fava beans, and a nice Chianti. And don't forget to hit that subscription button so you'll be alerted every single time I post a new true crime case. Cheers! Tyree Smith was born January 11th, 1977, and his parents are Cheryl Rabb and Adolph Smith. His parents were young when they conceived Tyree. His mother was 18 and his father was 21. The couple married just before Tyree's seventh birthday. He attended Ansonia High School in Connecticut, and he withdrew from high school on September 8, 1994. He attended the Job Corps, which is a vocational program administered by the U.S. Department of Labor that assists young adults by teaching them a trade. Tyree then moved to California near his cousin Nicole Rabb. He also had a son in the late 90s, but there is not too much information about that. Fast forward to 2007 and Tyree was charged with assaulting his girlfriend, but only receiving probation for this crime. Tyree spent the following years, up until about 2011, working on his writing. He was writing a book, but there is also not much else that we know about him. There's not a lot of documentation, and we just don't really know a whole lot of what he was doing. But it does appear as if his mental health was becoming much more fragile during this time because he did make this post in January of 2011. Quote, I have really tried hard to write this book. First I lose 150 pages worth of work. Now somehow my flash drive to back it up is missing. It has about 300 pages worth of work on it. I really do hope I misplaced it, which I can't see due to the fact that I do not move anything on my desk. I'm not going to accuse my son as I somehow always do when something turns up missing, end quote. And several hours later, he posted, quote, okay, I drink a lot, end quote, quote, but there's no way in hell this flash drive was sitting in literally front of me like this. All I had to do is raise my head. It is even eye level two. Okay, I'm done being paranoid. Thanks again. I should stop playing so many war games, end quote. In July of the same year, he moved to Lynn Haven. He was living off and on with a woman named Michelle Renee Metzens. The two were previously neighbors, but Michelle would receive complaints about Tyree from her landlord. Allegedly, a neighbor saw Tyree standing in front of the apartment building, staring at the sky. He wasn't wearing shoes and was holding a bottle of wine at 10 a.m. On December 15th, Tyree made a turn for the worst. He traveled to his cousin Nicole's apartment by bus, Nicole saw that Tyree was out of sorts, acting very odd. He was drinking a bottle of sake and spoke to Nicole about a book he was writing about murder, rape, and the Greek gods. He had a small axe inside of his backpack and told his cousin he needed to get blood on his hands. It is believed that after Tyree left Nicole's apartment that he then traveled to the Brook Street apartment building where he used to live. He was laying on the ground and a homeless man named Angel Gonzalez invited Tyree inside of the building because Angel had been staying there off and on during you know, the cold season. So he invited uh, Tyree into this building and this is when Tyree just completely lost it. Once the two were inside of the building, Tyree claims he heard someone say, quote, this is your blood, end quote. Tyree then attacked Angel with an ax and beat him to death. He then took Angel's brain and eyes to a cemetery and consumed them. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of information out there about where police located Angel um, and where they were able to like find DNA to match him up to find out who he was because there were articles that were saying that Angel was like completely found in a cemetery and I found an article that said he was found mostly inside of the building but there were like traces of DNA found in the cemetery so I'm not 100% sure about that so I believe that there was probably a DNA in both places but he was mostly in the apartment building because Tyree boarded up the front of the building so police had to tear that down in order to get inside but I'm not 100% sure on where they found his body but Tyree did take some of his body to a cemetery to consume it. 
Tyree then went back to Nicole's apartment and sat with her at her dinner table and said, quote, I got my blood, end quote. He described how he murdered and ate pieces of Angel in great detail to Nicole. He told her the killing gave him a rush like he had never experienced before. He told her he has a sexual lust for blood. Nicole then forced Tyree out of her apartment and contacted his mother, Cheryl. And I cannot even imagine what Nicole was feeling and going through. I'm sure that has got to be absolutely horrifying, you know, being at your home and somebody like invading your personal space and telling you how they murdered someone and how they enjoyed it, especially someone in your family, like your cousin, somebody that you were probably very close to while you were young. So that has got to be absolutely horrifying. And I feel really bad for Nicole that she had to like deal with that, especially right after he murdered someone that same night. That's so scary. The next morning, Cheryl called police and asked them to do a wellness check at the abandoned apartment building. When they arrived, they found the building had been boarded up and of course they had to tear it down in order to do a wellness check on Tyree. Cheryl told police about what her son had done and she also told Tyree to go to the hospital, but he quickly left before he could be treated. On January 11th, Tyree was found in a CVS aisle with a cut wrist. He was bleeding very heavily. He actually cut himself with a box cutter that he found in the store. And so he was bleeding very heavily and an ambulance was called for him by the store staff. And he was quickly taken to St. Vincent's Hospital and he was treated for his wound, of course. But then he was held there for a little while afterwards for the behavioral program just to make sure that he was okay mentally but for some reason they let him go and there was no correspondence with the police or anything about this because he was let go shortly after he was there. Tyree's whereabouts are unknown for almost two weeks but on January 23rd he arrived back at his friend Michelle's apartment and she invited him again to stay. One of Michelle's neighbors, Louis Farias, was approached by a U.S. Marshal who had been staking out the apartment building. Lewis confirmed that Tyree was in the apartment building and he was arrested at around 7 p.m. that day. He was taken to Bay County Jail where he had his initial hearing and then he was flown to Bridgeport for his trial. Police seized two medications from the apartment, Trazodone, which is an antidepressant, and Cephalexin, which is an antibiotic used to treat bacterial infections. Michelle told police that Tyree had started a life management program but was not taking his medications regularly. Lewis later said that a conversation with Michelle after police left became very bizarre. She told him that Tyree was a hacker affiliated with the website WikiLeaks and his arrest was a conspiracy. I feel like Michelle, after reading a few articles regarding this case and their relationship, I feel like Michelle potentially had some issues as well with her mental health. And so her and Tyree together, I feel like were a really bad combination because they were kind of feeding off of each other's um, issues and not telling each other to get help or to get their medication in order. They were just kind of both feeding off of each other's ideas and it kind of just like manifested into Tyree's behavior becoming out of control because it did appear as if he spent a lot of time with Michelle. But I do feel like she also had some issues as well, especially if she believed that his arrest was a conspiracy, even though he was being charged with not only murder, but cannibalism. While in prison, Tyree was heavily medicated and on constant suicide watch. And in September 2013, Tyree's trial took place in front of a panel of three judges. Multiple psychiatrists testified that Tyree was not safe to be put back into the community, but that they believed he was not guilty by plea of insanity. Even Tyree's lawyer said, quote, We have to look at the big picture. We can't overlook that he ate a part of a man's brain and eyeballs in a cemetery, end quote. The judges found Tyree not guilty by reason of insanity, and he was committed to a high-security psychiatric hospital for 60 years. During the court proceedings, an unidentified man shouted, quote, Tyree, Tyree, I'm your blood, I'm your blood, end quote. He was escorted out of the court while saying, quote, I ain't saying he didn't do it, I know he did, but I'm his blood, end quote. So what do you all think about this case? I found it very interesting and frankly kind of scary. I really was like interested in doing this, but there's not a ton of information about Tyree on the internet. There's the articles that of course, after he was caught in sentence, but I don't really think that this made like national headlines. Like I've never heard about it until I was doing like a couple TikToks and I was looking up 
uh, like Connecticut killers and he popped up but I've never heard of any of this so I found it very scary and I also find it kind of scary that there are large gaps of time where we have no idea what he was doing especially for like two weeks in uh, January after he committed the murder so I could believe that maybe he potentially has more victims and has more people that he potentially killed and ate because we have no idea what he was doing during that time and of course he went after someone who's homeless so that's you know would tell me that he would probably go after someone else who's maybe homeless or um, you know potentially like a sex worker people who don't get looked for as much by police whether if he were to you know kidnap a child or something like that so I do think that he may have more victims it just seems odd to do that the one time and never do it again and I do believe that this is simply a case of somebody's mental health being looked over for years and years Tyree clearly had issues even his high school girlfriend you know made Facebook posts after he was arrested and tried saying that she felt bad and she wished she could have done something to help him back then because she knew he had problems but it just seems like no one really ever reached out and did anything for him and prevented this because clearly his mental health just became worse and worse over time and clearly to not only kill someone but consume them is very dark and something that you really have to be having some major issues to do right so I feel like it's totally wrong that everybody just looked over this and chose to just ignore it as if it wasn't going on and it's really sad that Angel had to pass away in such a violent and horrifying way while he was just offering to help somebody and he offered to let Tyree sleep in his you know area that he was sleeping in and then Tyree killed him so I find that really sad and I just feel so bad for Angel's family and other people that spent a lot of time with him in the streets. They held a really nice funeral for him and a lot of people really loved him and even though he was homeless he wasn't alone. A lot of people really cared about Angel and it just makes me really sad. So I will leave some links down below and some hotlines if you know you know anybody that's having some serious mental health or yourself are having some issues, um, having some dark thoughts. I will leave resources for that down below just because it's so important to also you know just help yourself but also prevent other people from getting hurt. That's so important and that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't think about. So I will definitely leave links for that down below. If you guys need to check any of that out, feel free. And um, if you guys like this video, please hit the like button. I really appreciate it. And also subscribe if you uh, like this video and you want to see more from me. I put out about two videos a week. Um, and also check me out on TikTok. I do short format cases on there. If you guys are interested in that type of thing, I have a whole bunch of cases on there. Um, and that is about it, guys. I will see you later. And thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.